Good evening, and welcome to Cafe Politique. My name is Robert Ermel, and I am the Director of Operations for the Manitoba Institute for Policy Research. To find out more about the Institute, what we do, you can take a look at the handbills that you found in your seat, or visit us on our website at mipr.ca. Tonight we're discussing jobs in Manitoba, questions about the future. Governments and businesses, citizens, we all have a role to play in supporting skill development, education, and workforce participation in Manitoba. How does government create a labor market strategy? What roles do business and civil society play in supporting and driving labor market development? What demographic factors are taken into consideration in developing these plans? How do we engage people facing persistent entry barriers in the workforce? How do we build a diversified workforce? Our panel this evening will be answering these questions and many more. Our panel this evening it is made up of Ms. Jan Forrester, Mr. Tim Fedenu, and Dr. Shauna McKinnon. Their detailed bios can be found in your welcome papers. Our moderator this evening is Dr. Andrea Rounce. Dr. Rounce is the academic director of the Institute and is also an assistant professor in the Department of Political Studies at the University of Manitoba. She teaches and researches in public administration, focusing on post-secondary education policy, among other areas of study. She has co-edited a book with Dr. Jared Wesley entitled Disengaged, Fixed Date Democracy and Understanding the Manitoba Election, which will be launched here in April, so hopefully you'll come up for that. <coughs> Following tonight's event, I encourage you to fill out the feedback form or send us an email and let us know what types of events you'd like in the future. Many of our ideas and many of our events come from what you've provided as feedback in the past. I'll now pass it over to Andrea to start the evening. Enjoy. Great. Thank you, Rob. And thank you all of you for coming out tonight. The success of these kinds of events are really due to people like yourselves who are coming out to listen, to engage, and to have interesting discussions. And there are always interesting discussions and questions to be had at, at these events. So thank you. So I'd like to just not take too much time at all. Um, I know that all of you are here because you have an interest in jobs in Manitoba, in the skills agenda, in what it means for people who are interested in employment, what employment might look like in the province and in the country in the future. And I know that all three of our panelists are going to provide us with some very interesting information on their perspectives on what's going on in terms of, of the world of jobs and the economy. So I'm going to pass it over um, to Jan to start us off tonight. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm very pleased to be here and I thank the organizers for uh, inviting me. I'm uh, here on behalf of Jobs and the Economy Department in the province of Manitoba and uh, quite excited to talk about jobs in the labour market because uh, that's what we're focused on. Um, Manitoba has a, a quite a, a strong labour market strategy and you don't find it typed out anywhere as the strategy. We have a number of uh, actually plans underneath the broad labour market strategy and I'll, uh, I'll try and describe a few of them today. But we have a very uh, diversified and stable economy as uh, compared to the rest of the provinces in uh, the country. In the last five years we've had the third best average annual growth in uh, GDP. And we're likely to see that trend continue. And in large measure, what we what we know is that our labor force and our, our workforce is uh, a really critical element of our strong economy. Um, we need to focus on that in order to to really continue to grow our economy. We um, we also know that in Manitoba we have uh, what's really largely known as sort of the third best. Uh, unemployment rate across uh, the provinces. So uh, the third lowest, consistently lower than the national average. And while that's a good thing, and it means that we have a lot of people participating in the labor market, it also means uh, for, the, for uh, large measure, employers have trouble finding the, the labor, both skilled and unskilled, that they need. And, uh, and, and it also means that there's a number of folks that are persistently excluded from the labor market that we need to to really focus on trying to bring in. So how do we create a, a public policy a labor market strategy? I think it's extremely complicated. There's uh, a numerous um, factors that go into looking at what is our labor market and I thought I'm not going to bring a bunch of statistics on, uh, although Harold could have provided some of them, I can see them, uh, on who's participating in our labor market and, and what kind of factors we look at. But uh, I think 
everyone knows that there's a lot of research analysis and evaluation goes into it. And we look at um, you know, demographics, regional trends, uh, national and international economic factors. But we also look at different regions in our province. And it, it's important to note that Manitoba doesn't have one labour market. We actually have a number of them. Um, the north is very different uh, labour market compared to Steinbach, um, Winnipeg versus uh, Brandon are, are very different. And so we need to look at, at these things in a very granular fashion. So we also, when we're trying to look at what our labor market policy needs to be, we really look at what employer, employers are telling us their needs are. And we have, uh, in Manitoba, we're fortunate enough to have uh, 17 sector councils, these industry organizations that provide us with detailed information on what their uh, employers' needs are, who, uh, you know, and, and consistently, actually, they tell us that their number one challenge is finding enough skilled and unskilled workers to meet their needs. We also have a, an advisory council in Manitoba that is a, a really valuable um, uh, source of advice for the province. So we have a, it's called the Minister's Advisory Council on Workforce Development, and it's made up of, of employers from throughout the province who tell us what, what their challenges are and what their needs are. And, and consistently you hear in, in all sorts of surveys of employers that their main problem in terms of their growth and, and growing their business is finding and keeping the right people. So it's kind of an interesting problem. Um, we also know, you know, uh, we look into our labor market by looking at who's included, who's participating, and who's excluded. And, and I'm going to get to that uh, later, but I think that's sort of the, our primary focus right now. We also look at what our community partners tell us and what our agencies that work with people who are trying to enter the labor market tell us when we're looking at labor market policy. And we do significant consultation with community and uh, citizens and participants. Everything from, uh, we have the Premier's Economic Advisory uh, Council. We have um, done focus groups with citizens from single parents who, who receive social assistance to uh, youth who are thinking about going into apprenticeship. Um, we have ongoing discussion across departments, which is really a critical thing because each of our departments works on, on or so many departments work on areas that touch the labor market from uh, immigration to uh, housing and, and uh, everything in between. And, and really, um, you can't just look at uh, labor market policy in isolation of broad social policy. Key to what we consider when we're looking at labor market policy, of course, is federal policy. And uh, you've seen lots in the news in the past two years probably about the federal labor market agreements and uh, uh, Minister Jason Kenney and, and uh, you know discussions with provincial ministers about labor market funding. And, and really the heart of this is that um, you know, labor market funding is, is critical uh, to provinces and it's a really important um, source of of uh, uh, funds for us to be able to help people to connect into the labor market. So lots of important discussions going on there, but of course a shift in federal policy like we've seen uh, lately really affects uh, uh, provinces and, and they need to pay attention to, to those shifts so that we can appropriately proceed. So we have to be able to shift and evolve quickly as, as our labor markets shift. And so there's a number of things that go into looking at labor market policy. And the first uh, thing that you know some might think of is immigration. And Manitoba's had quite a robust uh, immigration and, and uh, has really actually led the provinces in the uh, provincial nominee program in terms of bringing in workers. And that's really important. Um, of course, there's been federal shifts in, in that end as well. And I won't get into that one, but it, but it does become a bit challenging. But the bottom line is that uh, we're not going to meet all of our needs um, by an immigration strategy to, to help our labor force. We need to look at that as one element of the solution, but it can't be the only solution. Um, we also have to look at you know education and, and our post-secondary strategies. Uh, so how are we helping our youth um, you know, be prepared for entering the labor market when they graduate, and how are they being supported to connect in on the pathway to success in a post-secondary education, if that makes sense for them. So there's a lot of work going on right now in the province on a new post-secondary sort of vision, and we're also uh, very focused right now on helping do a better job at, at providing information to parents and youth and counselors and schools, etc., on where the jobs are in Manitoba and how you would connect and what, what pathway you would get 
on uh, to get into those jobs. So there's a lot of work going on across provincial departments. Um, so we're working closely with um, education and advanced learning and children youth opportunities, for example, on, on how can we connect together to, uh, to really do a better job at providing labour market information to youth so they can do career development, make informed decisions on, on their future. Another big piece of it, of course, is looking at who is excluded or marginalized and not participating in the labor market. And that's where my area has uh, spent uh, significant focus in the past uh, couple of years. Um, you know, I think it's actually an exciting time because, as I said, our labor force is such that we have a very uh, low unemployment rate. So a lot of people would say that most people that can work are working and we also have a population of folks that need a hand and some support so that they can um, successfully enter the workforce. And what we're doing is really looking at who are those individuals that are excluded and how can we better uh, support them. So. We have the, the Premier has a skills strategy and uh, he made a commitment in the throne speech a couple of years ago that by the year uh, 2020 uh, we would add 75,000 new workers into the labour market and that couldn't be reached by simply you know adding up the, the numbers of kids that are going to graduate high school and also looking at newcomers coming into Canada. So it was kind of an exciting um, um, gauntlet to throw so that all of us realize that if we're going to meet those targets they're important to helping our economy grow. Everybody needs to be part of the labor market and, and, and you can't exclude uh, people with disabilities or, or other individuals uh, who um, aren't really um, being uh, having an easy way facilitated into the labor market. So to me it's a good time for us to see this as an opportunity. It's, there's a business case for working with Aboriginal people, for instance, and, and, and people who receive social assistance, and, and they're needed as part of our, our labour market. So we have a new strategy in uh, the province. It's, it's, it was developed in 2013. I still think of it as new. But at, at, we recently uh, merged the departments responsible for social assistance and, and programs for people with disabilities to connect and to work into the department that has the responsibility for um, education, uh, for training and skills development, which seems like it isn't rocket science, but they were in two different worlds before. So what you found was that the training supports, that were primarily focused on people that just needed a quick tune-up and, and to get into work, and they weren't really geared towards people with, with more significant uh, challenges that are keeping them from getting into work. So it's a big challenge to try to change those cultures and get everybody kind of rowing in the right direction, but slowly we're getting there. Um, the strategy that we released really articulated how we're going to do that. And a big part of it is, okay, we're hearing from employers that they can't get enough workers that are meeting their needs. And then at the same time, we have all these other individuals that are really would love to have a, a good sustainable job. And so we need to connect up these two priorities. Um, so the strategy is, is very focused on social assistance, but really it, it focuses on all those individuals in Manitoba that need a hand to connect in. And we've done a lot of work looking at things like our assessments. How are we looking at uh, people's uh, needs? And, and really it seems like this shouldn't be rocket science either, but we've modernized our assessments so that we're really looking at people's strengths and their capacity and their needs and challenges, and then trying to tailor solutions based on their individual needs. Uh, we're also using the same assessment tool across different systems in the province, and uh, so that they're talking the same language. So in the past, you might have had, um, you know, the social assistance uh, caseworker says this person is ready to work, and then they would get over to the, the training side of government to work with them, and they'd say, no, they're they're not ready to work. Actually, they're they're uh, they have significant challenges, and so we're we're spending a lot of time focusing on developing consistency in our language and and making sure that people are truly ready to proceed before pushing them into uh, the first job that they can find, and really looking at what are their needs. We're also spending a lot of time uh, with um, something called essential skills, and really looking at what are um, the needs in the workplace. And, and what are the individual's uh, strengths and capacities in those areas, and then how can we top them up in a, in a fairly uh, concise way so that they can be successful in the job. There's lots of evidence 
um, you know, worldwide on essential skills, but actually Manitoba's been quite a leader in this area, and uh, it's very, um, it's showing very successful. I'll talk a little bit about that in a second. I'm hoping I can cover all my, my points here. One more minute? Ooh, okay. Um, so. We're, uh, we're doing a lot for single parents right now. We're doing um, some pilot projects with uh, community agencies that are looking at sort of holistic wraparound supports. And early results from the evaluations, which should be out soon, are showing significant success. So that almost things like post-employment supports are really helping people uh, connect in. Um, let's talk a lot about a number of things, but I'm just gonna think about here for one second how to wrap it up. Um, lots of collaborations with other departments. We have a new uh, collaboration with Justice and Housing, where people that are coming out of correctional institutes are are um, being supported with housing and uh, employment and training so that they can get on their feet. Um, let's see here. We have some apprenticeship co-ops for those uh, that have some barriers that are really starting to show success, particularly in the north. Um, I guess I'll wrap it up by saying that in the North we've seen some really good success with a few large employers uh, who are using essential skills and, um, and providing a welcoming kind of diverse uh, workplace for Aboriginal people. One of the employers that's had the most success with this has found that hiring people in, um, in groups as opposed to just one-offs is really valuable so that if someone is new to this workplace culture um, they have a friend to talk to and rely on and um, especially for uh, um, Aboriginal people in the North that are, are traditionally excluded by some of these large employers, they're finding it um, much more successful when they're hired on and in, in, with their peers. And um, so we're seeing some employers that are really stepping up and providing a more welcoming uh, workplace, which is I think really exciting. So we're trying to have those conversations with other employers about how we can show them that you know this is meeting their needs. So lots going on in Manitoba. I think um, you know there's websites if you want to look at some of this information. But I'm happy to talk to anybody afterwards as well. Um, I think that uh, labor market strategy is is one of uh, the most important areas of government. I'm a little biased, but uh, I think some of our efforts are are going to take time and these are big uh, systems to try to change. Things like modernizing social assistance and, and helping uh, develop cultures that are supportive of people. But I think we're, uh, we're starting to get there. So um, yeah, with that, I'll, I'll pass back.